I'm Terry Thornton. I'm curator of education here at The Modern, and it's uh, my honor to uh, welcome you to Tuesday evenings um, at The Modern. Um, tonight is a very special Tuesday evening lecture. The um, Tuesday evening season will begin in full on February 19th with the artist Brad Tucker, but tonight we've, had, we've made special provisions for a very special opportunity. Um, the Belgian artist um, Dirk Brockman is here uh, for Focus Dirk Brockman, which opens this coming Saturday. Dirk's work was featured in the uh, Belgium Pavilion in the last Venice Biennale, which was quite honestly, I'm not blowing sunshine, I mean this, quite honestly one of my absolute favorite pavilions. Um, the Biennale, while an amazing experience, can be a bit of an onslaught, and um, I found refuge in Dirk's photographs. Um, as described in the essay for that exhibition, quote, Dirk Brockman's work brings stillness to today's um, steady tide of images, and for me, um, the hum of the Biennale. Um, Dirk's work um, has been exhibited extensively across the globe, including uh, solo exhibitions in Brussels, Paris, Amsterdam, Ghent, uh, Santa Monica, and as mentioned, Venice, where he represented Belgium for the 2017 Biennale. We are proud to note that Focus, Dirk Brockman, is his first solo museum, solo museum exhibition in the United States. I know. Um, Allison Hurst, um, the curator of the Modern's Focus exhibition, um, exhibitions, has um, done us all an enormous favor bringing this work to the modern, to Fort Worth, to the DFW Metroplex, to North Texas. Um, and I am most appreciative that Allison and Dirk have agreed to be in conversation tonight about Dirk's interesting practice of pushing the limits of photography for lush and mesmerizing results that hold us in their quote unquote non-places. As I know you're aware, we, this evening um, has great promise, and I'm sure you're um, ready to get to it. So without further delay, please join me in welcoming Dirk Brockman and Allison Hurst. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry, and I just wanted to say thank you to Dirk for doing this exhibition with me. It's been such a lovely process mm -hmm. working with you, and. I'm really excited for you all to see the show as well. <laughs> yes, uh, like uh, Terry said, it's my first uh, museum show in the States. I was showing several times in the States, but it's, so I thank you, Alison, to, to give me this chance and to invite me to this uh, beautiful museum. Absolutely. So I just wanted to also say that we decided to just kind of show um, some slides of Dirk's work throughout the years just to give you an idea of his practice. Um, and I also wanted to say that the images come close but are in no way representative of seeing the work in person. So I really hope that you all come back and, and see the show when it opens on Saturday. So. Um, I wanted to kind of start, you've been an artist for 35 years. Um, at what time did you first become interested in art, and in particular photography? Actually, uh, I think it, when it was about 10, 12, um, I, I come from a family who is not really interested in, in art or culture. They are in business and so, I was not grow up in this kind of uh, universe. So suddenly I met people who introduced me to art and I was completely into, so it was also a kind of uh, revolting to, to my uh, family. I, my family, I, I love them, but it's also a kind of being myself, looking for myself. And I was mostly in, interested in drawings, paintings, I was busy with those things. And then after years, I went to the academy to, to study painting. And then a friend of me said, 
uh, think about photography. It's very important now in painting, like Richter, or even also Belgium artists like Le Thermos. They use photography to bring in their practice and start from that to make their own interpretation. And I said, maybe I have to do that, because I never touched a camera before. And so I decided to study a few months or a year of photography, so I know the medium, so I can use it and bring it in my practice. But I'm still busy. It's, uh, after 35 years, it's still a challenge to work with this medium. Maybe one time I come back to drawings and, and painting installations, what I'm doing also now. But uh, yes, it's actually, when I was young, before I went to the academy, the only thing I didn't want to do was being photographer. Why? Because I was on several parties, like a marriage. And, and so I was the photographer as the center. And I was shy. I was saying, I never want to be the center of the, the whole event. And, and also the photographer was kind of animator. I'm not against. It's, it was kind of a reaction. I, I didn't knew what I wanted to do as a profession, but I did know that I don't want to become a photographer. And I'm completely in. <laughs> <laughs> but in a different, of course, in a different way. And like what you were saying, you didn't want to be the center, you didn't want to, you know, take that role as, as a photographer, but, you know, I, I think, it is interesting because you often, in a way, the works seem a little bit autobiographical because you're taking photos on trips and as you travel. And, um, you know, in a sense, I know your work isn't documentary, but in a sense, you're documenting these things, but it seems like you're doing so in, in kind of a solitary way. Um, would you consider your work autobiographical in some ways? It's not the idea to, to make an autobiographic work or oeuvre, but because of um, I'm not really looking for things or searching for events or I don't travel to, to make pictures, but I travel to experience. And maybe I take, mostly I take pictures, but sometimes it doesn't happen. So I, take mostly my, my shootings very close around me. So that's why it gives a kind of underline that it is autobiographic. So you can say it's kind of autobiographic work, but it's not the basic idea. Mm -hmm. But it's because I, I'm looking very close around my uh, how is that? Uh, sometimes I'm traveling and I don't shoot. It happens. I come back and then I shoot mm -hmm. with the experience I have from. So I, I'm, like you said, I'm not a documentarist, but uh, I want to say that it's not, I'm not against, even I'm jealous I can do it. I remember an anecdote. And I was 22, I was still a student. They offered me a job for a newspaper. And uh, I said, okay, I want to do that. Just for three months, it was uh, like uh, to replace somebody who was pregnant. And so I said, yeah, I want to do that. And then I realized it's not for me. I said, yeah, because when I was in the, with the journalists, who invited me, the writing journalist. We went to uh, an event like uh, a march or, or an accident. Of, they had to say to me, when going to take your picture? I forgot, I was too involved in the situation. So then I said, nah, that's not 
my thing. I have to look at other things. And then the, the idea of painting and drawing came back, but I want to s stay with the medium. Mm -hmm. And then I started to uh, experiment in dark room and shooting different and uh, different way, shooting things around me. And I started with, mostly with portraits, people, nudes. That, that was my very first work. Mm -hmm. and, and the shooting were more a kind of pretext to have negatives to take in my dark room. And it, it always stays like that, that. So looking for, not look, looking for the right things, but just looking around me what's happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not a storyteller. I want to make images. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to tell stories. That's the difference mm -hmm. between my colleagues who does uh, more, uh, some of them more documentary, but also to, uh, to photograph like, for example, setups in the studio. So it's more like um, a window to a certain reality. And like you said, when we see here, it's a projection. It's a kind of reference, but they are so different in real. And you can say it's with every art, of course, but there is a difference because those are photographs. Mm -hmm. And when you see it on a screen or a, a, yeah, a screen or published in a book, you read it as a photograph. And when you see a painting or an installation in a book or a screen, you, you have the, the idea already, it will be different and real. Mm -hmm. But that's not happening here. And they are very physical. It's very important. You have to see them in real, because of the scale, the texture. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, mm -hmm. it's it's like tableaus. It's like they are very very physical, and they are like uh, also uh, quite big formats, one to one. Sometimes you have the feeling you can step in. So it's not like photographs in a, in a frame in Passepartout. Mm -hmm. You come, you approach and you come in and you look like through a window. No, the, the physical aspect, not only for the viewer, but also to make it, it's very important. Is that one of the reasons why you never use glass on your framed works? Or did you ever at one yeah, point do that? I did, I did, I tried different things, but uh, I didn't find the right thing. They are fragile, but finally it's a part of, of the work. Sometimes collectors or, or collections, they decide to frame them, but that's not a part of the work. That's like a kind of vitrine. Mm -hmm. Vitrine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They put around to to protect them, mm -hmm. but then you lose a lot because you you don't feel the texture. You are not with them. You are looking through a kind of window, and that's not the idea. And I, that's always a discussion with my gallery who want to frame them, <laughs> because he they say always, yeah, people are touching it and they want to feel what it is and, but I can't, no, I can't frame it. Mm -hmm. They are framed, right. the, just the borders, but it's invisible. It just to protect the borders. Mm -hmm. And like I said, uh, this kind of fragility is a part of uh, the, the work when they are behind glass or varnish or they are in another space. Um, 
as we're going through these slides and just thinking about your earlier career, you, you often, going back to the, the subject of subject matter, you're often, there's recurring themes throughout your work, photographs of paintings, photographs of other photographs, um, interiors, people, nudes. What, yeah. what role does subject matter play for you in your work? Yeah, uh, before I said it was kind of pretext when I photographed uh, people around me in portraits, but uh, afterwards it, it changed. Actually, of course, the work in the dark room is very important, but you can't make a good print without a, a kind of a, a negative who is not interested, who, who have n I don't have a, a relation with it. If I have the right negative, it's one movement. It's one thing, the, the shooting, even the film, because it's all uh, analog. You say that in mm -hmm. English? Analog, analog, yeah. Most of the things you see is analog, what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not at all against digital. I use it. Even I'm shooting sometimes digital, and then, then I make a negative for, for, from the digital document so I can work in my dark room. So um, it's not because I don't use it, but I miss something. I try to work on a computer and screen, but uh, one week, I could I return to my dark room. I miss too much the physical aspect, the organic, mm -hmm. can you say, mm -hmm. process. When uh, and also the the, the 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 difference between the the prints are always different. Even when you want to make the same print, when you put them next to each other, they are different. Mm -hmm. When you print. I don't say it's important, but I think it's it, it's more like a, a tactical aspect. When you print a digital, you push three times or say three prints, it's exactly the same. And that's for me not a challenge, but mostly the physical aspect to to work in the dark room, I have a, quite a huge dark room. Later we can see, we, we can show the film. Yeah. Uh, how I'm working in the dark room. But uh, I lost where I was. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to watch the process video now and start? Can uh, yeah, maybe I can explain a little okay. bit more about the video. It's a very short video. It's about five minutes to have an idea, a visual idea how I'm working. Mm -hmm. But there is one part I'm shooting, a painting, and normally I don't shoot, like I said, I don't go to somewhere and take a tripod and big camera. No, that's not... So that's exceptional. Mm -hmm. You will see how I work in the video. But in the dark, the part of the dark room is quite mm -hmm. like I'm working here. Uh... John, can you play the video?
gives a more or less an idea, mm -hmm. <laughs> a visual idea. Mm -hmm. It's very short, but uh, yeah. Um, I, I realize that those are photographs of paintings, but I also wanted to talk with you a little bit. Your, something I, I feel like I sensed from your work when I saw it in person is it did have such a physical um, component to it. You know, for the viewer, there is such a, f a physical, visceral connection with the work itself. But seeing the video you showed me at your studio and seeing you toiling away with mops and, you know, just such a physical process in the dark room, um, not only in your process, but in the work itself, I feel like there is a, just a huge connection to painting. And I, I know you started as a painter, but um, I wanted to know what, what role that has. Yeah, I think that influenced me and still paintings are influenced me more than uh, other mediums. But uh, the, the, the connection is mostly, I take pictures like more or less painted does, and then I take the picture in my studio and then I create my own image. But sometimes I leave the negative for months, for years, maybe sometimes for 10, sometimes I use negatives I, I shoot 20 years ago. I'm, I'm just, I have a uh, kind of archive and that's the first thing when I step in my dark room, it's looking at the picture I want to print. So it can be something from two years ago, but recent things mostly I don't choose because then I'm too close with the emotion of the moment of the shooting. When I'm looking at my uh, contact sheets, at my negatives, it's more when I, I I leave some time in between, I can forget the emotion and I look more to the image, and then I can make another image. Then the emotion of the moment. Of course, the emotion of the moment is also important to shoot it, to have the right negative. But I don't want to have too much this emotion with me when I print it. Because that's also when I, am, I, I have to write a, a date on, my, uh, on the picture. Then I, I do it always from the, the date of the print, not from the shooting. Mostly uh, other photographers, it's the, the, the the shooting is the date from the creation. But for me, the image is only finished when it's printed. It's printed. That's the creative process also, which is so important, a part of, like I said, the shooting is important too, mm -hmm. yeah. And your titles too, I was speaking of how you, you don't date the works until the work is printed. You're, titles are often a little cryptic too. It's a combination of the date, but also some letters. Is, is that more for archival purposes? Yes. And is it to purposefully kind of strip away the narrative from the work right. as well? Yes, well, even when I, I gave one word, word a title, you guide people, the audience, you guide, I don't want to guide Nothing, even when you ask me where is that or what is that, I don't talk about because I have the experience when I said one word, it guides to a di direction. I remember also another uh, anecdote when I delivered first, my first sold work to the collector, he invited me to, to have dinner and he and his family said that tell me about the picture, and I tell the story, and he said, oh, that's a pity. That's, <laughs> and from then I said, I don't tell anything anymore, it's not, it's the image. You have the relation with the image. Right. And, and my work is 
uh, mostly about not showing. Yeah. So when I'm telling too much about, or I'm telling one word, it's too much also. Mm -hmm. Then I'm guiding, and my work is more about hiding things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a very, the, the, the work, in fact, when you go very extreme, the work is, is finished when somebody looks at it. Then the image, everybody has his own story or not, they just experience the image. You can um, have your own story before an image of me, but it can also be just the experience of the image. Yes. They are very accessible in that way. And, and I, th I think to me, part of it is that there's a certain timelessness about them. Um, you know, you, you said you, you often shoot the images sometimes years before you print them, but, but even in the quality of yeah. the prints, they, they have this timelessness about them, um, which I think is, you know, a, that's in the image itself, but thinking about your process um, thinking about some of the works you do with, you know, you reuse a negative in a, you know, there's yes. a triptych in this exhibition yes. that reuses the same negative, but it has a very different feel. Yeah, here you can it see went, also. Yeah. Um, yeah. What role yeah. does time and timelessness? Yes, actually, like, for example, the, the pieces who are in the show about the, 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 the border of the sea um, shooting is just a, uh, a wave who turns around. And that's a, maybe a thousand of a second like. You take a picture also. It's also about a very short moment. But then I take this negative in my practice and I give, I try to give it a, a, another layer of time. I use the same negative different times. And then the time there is more important than than le, le moment decisif like. And many photographers are doing that, the, the right moment in a fraction of a second. I try to stretch that also in my shootings. When I am somewhere, like I said, I can wait for days before I take my camera. I have to adapt, I have to see the, the character of where I am. The, of the place of the city or, or the room. Yeah. And then I can take my camera and do the things. But I, I don't go back, but then I, I go to the essential thing, what I need to make my uh, image. Yeah. Um, something we kind of touched upon when we met earlier, but um, I feel like this kind of brings it up as well, but you know, you're, you're reusing these images, these negatives over and over, but in very different ways, which is kind of counterintuitive to the way photography um, works today, just the, how easy, easily reproducible images are. And, um, you know, we're living in a world with image overload, but has that, been something that you've always been kind of skeptical about, or? And not really, because I'm, I'm already busy from the 80s. So right. before the, the explosion of the social media mm -hmm. about also, some people are asking me, is that a re reaction against all this overload images, social media, digital, mm -hmm. everywhere, thousands a day sometimes. So. I, I don't say I'm a visionary, but I was busy before those things happened. Because before I, we were also already overloaded with image, television, and publications. Mm -hmm. So maybe it was kind of reaction. And yeah, there has to, to be, I was looking for a kind of quietness to show also an image, but in a more, I don't say the, they are quiet. Uh, some journalist was 
uh, comparing my image, but he said those are like unexploded bombs. It was uh, Luxant, uh, he's also Belgian, but he's living all since his youth in New York. And uh, he had a big influence also to me because I discovered a book he made from uh, crime scenes, mm -hmm. from the police uh, crime scenes from the 30s. And I discovered that book and spent book sure he was on sale because nobody wants to buy this thing. Uh, very scary, but I was so impressed. But then I said, oh, why am I so impressed about these cruel things? And then, because I was questioning myself why I love this, just mm -hmm. these cruel things. But I was looking at another way. I was not looking at the story, but more at the quality and also the pictures were the, uh, the subject was not there anymore when the body was took away. Those things intrigued me the most because then my fantasy starts to, and also I, I'm very influenced about photography who is not used to, not wants to be art, but it's used to to document something for uh, an evidence or like the crime scenes. Mm -hmm. And then I look at it at another way. Mm -hmm. And it, it changed a lot for me because I was always questioning myself why I'm looking again and again to those pictures. You don't see, just see the interior. And yeah, that's the suggestion who plays uh, Ferry. And then I, I, I was just living in New York this time, at that time. And then I bought a very small camera. I have it. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. but not always, but uh, yes. Because I, I went to New York because, like an artist, every, everybody wants to go to. New York. So I had big cameras, and I saw always that the, when I came sh somewhere, the the whole the scene was changing. When they say camera, so I didn't want to carry also with the camera to be the photographer, like I said. Mm -hmm. So I bought this one. It's uh, an analog. It's, but it's with a fantastic quality. So some people think I'm, I'm using big format, but it's mostly done, yeah, it's all done with 35, mm -hmm. 24, 35 on this camera. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it gives me a certain flexibility. It's always around me or nearby me, and then, um, People don't care when you shoot with small cameras. It's, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's more security and, and and like police. I have a lot of because I can stay for hours in a place just to adapt me in this place and to 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 look different after an hour. And then people are coming. Oh, what are you doing so long here with this camera? And, it happens a lot, mm -hmm. yeah, because they don't see when I'm, I'm in a corridor, mostly places when you pass by and you don't stay, I stay there. Mm -hmm. To have a certain relationship with the, with the, the atmosphere, with the, the character, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, it makes sense that you do carry such a, a small camera with you because they are spontaneous. I mean, you are feeling yes. the character of a space, yes. but there's spontaneity in yes. the images. Yeah, those are not uh, snapshots. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanna, no. uh, because now you pass by, you say like that, or maybe you don't uh, look and mm -hmm. that's not the point. It's not my idea to 
to make a snap. I really want to adapt me at uh, the, the space, at, uh, also the moment, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and sometimes you see also the, the flashlight who returns in, into a, a window or a surface, and it refers to, to me, to my uh, presence. And mostly you don't see figures, but sometimes they are around. Sometimes I'm shooting people and I turn around. I shoot the backside of the scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But with a uh, kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, I think portraits are, for me, too much. I like portraits, good portraits, but it's, too much a story when people are asking, look in the camera, and then you have, it starts to be a story. So that's why I'm, I'm, I was uh, failing, uh, going away from doing portraits, because it was too photographic, because pe people are looking in the camera, and that's kind of story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I wanted to avoid, and then I started to, to photograph uh, people without seeing their face. So also new, and so little by little it started to become uh, only the, the space. But I don't want to, to make it systematic. So when I was shooting, when there were people around me and Sometimes they are in the picture, sometimes they are behind, and sometimes I'm alone. So, but to be clear, my work is not about loneliness, and not about they are dark and they are obscure. And some people are asking me, are you so depressed? I say, <laughs> not more than other people. <laughs> so, they are dark, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're very dark. And going back to what you said earlier about the crime scene photography, do you feel like something that, what attracted you to those was this kind of unstated tension about the images? Because I feel like tension is a topic that has come up a lot in your work. And as we've been installing the galleries, really, that we've been installing with works from a variety of dates, but just trying to create that sense of tension. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and what you were trying to achieve with the installation? Yeah, that's like what I said, what uh, Luxante said, unexposed. They, they are certain tension. Uh, they look quiet and they look like uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, like Terry said, when we were at the circus of uh, the Biennale, it was a point of rest. Mm -hmm. But it's not only about that, it's uh, also about kind of tension. And that's, uh, I think the t tension is coming because the subject is mostly very recognizable. You can see a window or a curtain, but like I said, it's more like uh, something who covers something. You want to know more about it. And that's also who brings the tension, the fantasy, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course, also the, the, the subject, like, like the, the more, uh, mostly interiors. Sometimes I'm going outside, it's more and more I'm coming to nature and more and more there's nature in my picture because it's more my, before I was like, uh, I was in big cities and nature. I grew up in nature, so I want to discover other things. But now I come back to mm -hmm. nature and you see that in my work also. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when I say mostly things are around me, uh, now they come out. It's since five, six, seven years. 
um, more outside than in, in, in big cities or in small rooms. Do you feel like that's perhaps one of the biggest things, one of the biggest aspects of your work that's changed over the past 35 years is the shift in scenery? Uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, steps I did, but sometimes uh, when you when you put them together, when you see and you see the the dates from the prints, you can see very good difference. But sometimes uh, people are, are looking very, some people I say looking forward. They say, okay, those black and white, those big prints, mat, and that's it. There it stops. But that's not the point. That's the formal thing. And that's my, uh, that's the only system I use. Every picture has another story. I don't tell it, but it has another story to, to, to create. But finally, they become to a, kind of same level, and the same format, the same texture. And that's important, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's like, it looks like a systematic thing, but the, the process is so different. Like you said, I'm using uh, existing images, paintings, spaces, nudes but also digital uh, pictures I re-photograph on my screen or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. So I don't want to have, uh, to, to uh, fix me on a systematic uh, process, no. Mm -hmm. But finally, the dark room, to print it, that stays or is since 35 years, yeah. I think this is a good point to open it up to questions from the audience. If you could raise the lights, John. Just raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mark. I'm curious to know about um, the images that are made of three or five photographs. You mentioned the importance of time in those. It, can you talk about how those are generated? Is it do you go into it with the idea of doing a number, or is it something that happens in the dark room? Or? Uh, no, I don't have the idea. But uh, when I'm busy and I feel that it makes sense to make different variations, I do it. So it's not with the the. the the idea, I, I'm going into my dark room to do more. But uh, when I'm busy, I do different uh, prints also to take one out. But when I see it makes sense, they stay together. I do it, yeah. And there are different series you can see on the screen, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, when you choose a negative to print, do you plan what you think the image will look like? Or what's the role of chance and spontaneity with all of your different tools and techniques? Yeah, uh, like I said, when I come in, in my dark room, I, then I decide what I'm going to print. And that's maybe a, an important thing. Uh, when I cre create, in, I try, I try, don't, uh, uh, to stop thinking, just that's why I'm, sometimes, mostly I'm listening to music, so, so I don't think about the image, I do it, it just, uh, it happens, and that's important. Uh, I don't say I don't think about, I am reading a lot, I'm thinking a lot about art, about life, about everything, but once I'm creating, I try to avoid that. That's, I think, a very important thing. Uh, once I start to think, it's, I, I have to stop. <laughs> uh, 
So uh, I'm looking for several things to to avoid that I like music, but I tried even uh, with the TV in my dark room with the red screen before, so I can look in between and um, be busy to to have a kind of uh, I don't say not a fo it's it's. Yeah, I want to avoid the, the, the focus on the process. It has to be uh, like, um, it has to come from my belly. <laughs> or how do you say it? Like your gut? Yes. Like a gut feeling? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's very important when, yeah. But of course, uh, all the things, I see a lot of art. Now I try to temporize a little bit because I try to, to, to uh, limit my uh, uh, influences. So I try to focus more and more on my work because uh, until I was 40, 50, I went to every show. I want to see everything. So, but now I try to avoid that to be only with the image, what I'm working on. And that's the kind of relation I build up in the dark room with the image. I'm staying sometimes 10 hours, 12 hours in the dark room. That's why I'm, I'm I was building a huge dark room with a uh, with good uh, ventilation so I can stay there for hours. And working also at night mostly because when I go out just then at daytime I have to adapt my eyes and it takes time. And maybe it's also important uh, as I, see, I can see what I'm doing in the dark room because Black and white, you can, there, uh, there was a light. Well, the paper is not sensible for uh, those light. So when I'm busy in the process, I'm using different tools, like uh, when I'm projecting the negative, I'm manipulating there, and then I'm manipulating in the, in the processing of the the, the print, like for example, I use different chemicals, but I use have a, a, an arsenal of tools around me, like dust and brushes and 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 uh, small lights. I would say that flashlights, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. lights. So it's kind of I'm playing. <laughs> yes, I like it, and every time it's another challenge, and the more I'm busy, the more I can play, the more I know I can provoke a certain uh, accident. And then it's up to me to show it or not, or to, uh, to throw it away or to show it. And you can do it, I think, in a digital uh, process. It's more, uh, yeah, you can't provoke like a uh, duvel, like accident, no. And for, I think it's very important, also the imperfection. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can also see that on my compositions. Uh, somebody said there's something always mm -hmm. is not straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and that's what, that's maybe also the the intention you're talking about yeah. the, the the tension you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Terry. That image is just stunning. It, and I I'm wondering about the, uh, your choices in that. And I understand that you're sort of thinking with your body and feeling with your mind, you're not, you're trying not to go straight at it, but um, the choice 
of what you cropped, the way you cropped that or framed that or what you landed on. Can you talk about that? Because that, that might be the best image of a kiss I've ever seen. <laughs> and I think it has everything to do with that kind of just the, the slight awkwardness that makes it so right. Or can you talk about that? Yes, normally I, it's, I don't do so much cropping. Mostly I use the whole negative. It's not. Uh, really a point I want to make, but sometimes I do, like this one, the kiss, is really a detail from another, actually a video <coughs> I was shooting. And then suddenly I discovered this image and then I was cropping, cropping up, till I was zooming into the right tension you have. And so you hide one, not completely, but, and you see the profile. So it, it's a kind of process to, to uh, eliminate. That's very important too. Like I said, it's, it's about not showing, it's also about eliminating, zooming in, but mentally. Not only photographically, but uh, yeah, going to the ascension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's enough. <laughs> we have time for one more. Yes. Uh, you play with um, dimensionality in many ways, uh, from the three-dimensional painting to the reflectivity. Um, is there uh, a metaphysical exploration going on there? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yes, I don't want to use this word, but uh, you're right. Yes, it's uh, you can say. I use, for example, when I see, look at a painting, I can stare, staring, staring for hours or something, yeah? and then I come in another kind of. A state of mind, and then I see other things. I see different. I see texture. I can, and then I start to make pictures from that, and I make my own crop, my own picture, and yeah, that's like uh, what you said. That uh, metaphysical. Metaphysical, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> but I still have to. <laughs> Thank you.